What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Football Focus 1 with your host Diamond Dan. So today we're going to be discussing the 2020 NFL Draft Grades. So now let's talk about my favorite division in football, the almighty AFC West. So to start it off, let's talk about the Chargers. So now in the first round with the sixth pick, the Chargers selected Justin Herbert, the quarterback out of Oregon. Now I know there's a lot of Justin Herbert haters out there, but those haters can't deny Herbert's physical skill set. All right, Herbert is 6'7", 240 pounds, and runs a 4'6'8 in the 40 at the NFL Combine. All right, um, It's pretty fast for a big dude. Herbert also showed his dynamic running ability towards the end of the season last year, in the bowl games, you know, in, in big moments, and so on. Herbert has a giant arm, biggest arm in the draft, in my opinion, and he's shown that he can be an elite, elite player, all right, elite quarterback. Now, if he's put in the right situation, now the one thing he will be, all right. Now, the one thing that Herbert does need to work on is his confidence in the little moments, all right. There was times last year when Herbert made bad decisions in certain situations, all right, and then that shouldn't have happened. So, for instance, like forcing the ball into a coverage window that he shouldn't have thrown, all right, when his team is up two touchdowns and ends up being a pick. So, which that those situations can be fixed with a good coach, right? And Anthony Lynn has already said that he's going to simplify the Chargers' offense this year. Now, if Anthony Lynn uses Herbert's abilities correctly, he will. Herbert's going to be a problem for the league for years to come. The Chargers then traded the second round and third round pick to go up and select one of the best off the ball linebackers in the draft, in Kenneth Murray, the linebacker out of Oklahoma. Now, Murray isn't your do-it-all type of linebacker, but he's a headhunter in the middle of the field, and he can also pay the, play the pass if needed. Now, it was a hefty price that the Chargers paid for, to go up 14 picks and get Murray in the first round, but with Murray in the middle of that Chargers defense, I do think that the Chargers defense is going to be a top value defense this year. All right? uh, then after that, they took Josh Kelly, the UCLA running back in the third round, and they took some more developmental prospects as well. Now, I did like when they selected K.J. Hill in the seventh round, the receiver out of Ohio State. I do think he's got the potential to be the Chargers' starting slot receiver when the season starts. Now, overall, I, I liked with the Chargers' first two picks in the draft with Herbert and Murray because the Chargers already had the roster to win now, right? And adding a big athletic QB and a headhunter type of linebacker to already go with that great defense should help that defense, again, be a top-five defense and help fix that offense overall. But to play devil's advocate at the same time, in a super deep draft like the 2020 draft, you really don't want to give away your second and third round picks to move up a few spots. Now, when you get a linebacker, you can go and get a linebacker like Zach Bond in the second round. So because I felt that this was a deep draft where the Chargers should have really capitalized on it and took those second and third round picks and selected players, I have to give the Chargers an overall C for their draft grade. All right, now let's talk about the Raiders. Now, with the Raiders' first pick, they shocked a few people when they took Henry Ruggs with the 12th overall pick. Now, I do think the Raiders should have taken CeeDee Lamb with this pick, but either way, the pick is, you can't go wrong, right? Ruggs or CeeDee Lamb or Judy, it's, they're all right. Uh, Ruggs is the closest thing to Tyreek Hill that I've seen in the last five years, flat out. Ruggs runs a 4-2 in the 40-yard dash. Ruggs also possesses great route running skills, legit ball skills, and some of the best hands in the draft. And then at the end of the day, Ruggs can really do it all. All right, he's going to be a problem for NFL teams uh, the same way Tyreek Hill, Tyree Hill is for years to come. So, great pick, Raiders. Then with the Raiders' second pick in the first round, they selected cornerback Damon Arnett out of Ohio State. Now, some people didn't like this pick and thought it was a reach for Arnett at 19. But at the end of the day, Arnett has, has the attitude, he has the skill set that the Raiders are trying to bring to that new team, all right, and, try to, and they're doing their rebuild. Arnett is physical and he's aggressive at the point of the catch, and he wins in press coverage as well. So Arnett will be the Raiders' number two corner for years to come. Now in the third round, they kept they took Lynn Bowden Jr., a QB running back receiver out of Kentucky, who I think Rudin will use like a Ra Antoine Randall L. You know he'll use him as a gadget player and then in certain runs and all that and certain throws. Um, so it was it was okay, big. The Raiders also took Brian Edwards, the wide receiver out of South Carolina. Now, I really like the Brian Edwards pick. Edwards is 6'3", and he's a beast at the point of catch. Edwards is extremely aggressive at the point of catch, and he manhandles receivers to make sure that he always wins the jump ball. Now, Edwards still needs to get better at running his running, running routes and defining his route running. An immediate impact with the Raiders. Then with their third pick in the third round, the Raiders took Tanner Muse, a safety slash linebacker out of Clemson. Now, Muse is another physical freak out of Clemson, just like Isaiah Simmons. Uh, Muse is 6'3", 230 pounds, and runs a 4-4-1. Muse played safety at, at Clemson, uh, but he'll most likely transition to an off-the-ball linebacker for the Raiders. Muse has a good nose for the football, and he's an overall playmaker. 
Now, the Raiders also had a great fourth round as well. First, they selected John Simpson, the guard out of Clemson. Now, Simpson was the number one overall rated guard, according to NFL.com. Simpson is a nasty, big, physical road grader, and he's going to make a difference day one. And he will be paving run lanes for Josh Jacobs for the next four years. So, good pick. Then, to finish the fourth round off, the Raiders got a Meek Robertson, the scrappy little cornerback out of Louisiana Tech. Now, Robertson was a steal here in the fourth round, in my opinion. Every analyst loved this pick. Robertson's about 5'8", 185 pounds, soaking wet, but he plays like he's 6'10". All right, he plays like he's Shaquille O'Neal. He's extremely aggressive. He plays smart. He plays press coverage as good as any quarter in the draft, and he doesn't get beat. He will be the Raiders starting nickel cornerback day one. All right? Now, Pro Football Focus rate graded him as the 75th overall best player in the draft, and the Raiders got him at pick 139. All right? Now, that is what you call a draft steal. Now, I really like what the Raiders did in the draft, all right? And that's coming from a Kansas City Chiefs fan, all right? So a Chiefs fan's telling you they did good. Now, I do think Ruggs is going to be an elite wide receiver. Uh, Arnett might not have been taken at the spot that people wanted to for some people's taste, but the Raiders now have their starting cornerback, second cornerback, who fits their scheme perfectly. Now, I didn't like the Bowden pick out of Kentucky uh, in the third round, but then after that, they literally drafted four straight players who will most likely start for them or, or who at least will contribute day one. So overall, I got to give the Raiders a B plus. Awesome draft Raiders. All right, now on to the Denver Broncos, who also had a great draft. Now with the Broncos first pick, they were able to get one of the best route runners I've ever seen coming out of college. So with the 15th pick in the first round, the Broncos selected Jerry Judy, the wide receiver out of Alabama. Now, Judy is an amazing talent who will be an elite wide receiver in the NFL for years to come. Now, Judy will instantly help to make that Broncos offense great again, like it was when Peyton Manning first got there, you know, years back, right? All Drew Locke's going to have to do is just get Judy the damn ball, all right? He'll do the rest. The Broncos then came back in the second round and grabbed K.J. Hamler, the wide receiver out of Penn State. Now, Hamler's another great receiver who runs a 4-4-1 in the 4-yard dash and is an explosive slot receiver that can really separate. Hamler even gave Jeffrey Akuda a run for his money when they played last year, and Akuda's the best corner in this draft. So now in the third round, with the 83rd pick, the Broncos took Lloyd Cushenberry, a very solid center out of LSU. Now, Cushenberry was rated the second best center in the draft this year, and is a technician in the run game. Now, he might not be a very powerful center who moves people around with his hands, and he's not a people mover, but he will be an efficient center, right? and he will be a great addition to that Broncos offensive line, and I do think he'll end up getting the starting position. Now, one of my favorite fourth-round picks in the draft was Albert O. I'm not going to say his last name. I'm going to butcher it. Uh, the tight end out of Missouri. So Albert O is 6'6", 260 pounds, and runs a 4'4 in the 40. All right? I mean, wow, when it comes to the physical attributes. Now, he's not a physical blocker, all right? but the Broncos didn't draft him to block. Albert O is almost unbeatable when it comes to getting into the jump ball. And to me, he's either going to be a bust or he's going to be an elite receiving tight end in the league for years to come. Then jumping to the sixth round, the Broncos got probably my favorite guard in the draft in Natani Muti, the guard out of Fresno State. Now, Muti is the perfect guard for the running the ball, all right? Muti is vicious, and he could be a pro bowler if he stays healthy. Muti was rated the pro football folks' 39th overall ranked prospect in the draft, and he was taken with pick 181 in the sixth round, all right? So now again, that's what I call a draft steal. Now, if Muti can stay healthy, and, and if so, like I said, the Broncos just got themselves a potential Pro Bowl guard in the sixth round. Awesome, awesome pick. Now, the Broncos also had the best seventh round pick in the draft, I think, in my, my opinion, in Derek Tuska, the edge rusher out of North Dakota State. Now, Tuska is a hard-nosed, physical 4-3 base defensive end. He's about 6'5", 250 pounds, and really knows how to get to the quarterback. Right? He's a great pass rusher. Now, it might take Tuska a while to adjust to against the NFL type of talent, but Tuska has the skill set and mentality to be a starting 4-3 base end for the Broncos here soon. And he was also, again, one of my favorite edge rushers in the draft. Just watch his tape and you'll know why. So, to be perfectly honest, the Broncos have one of the best drafts in the league this year. Uh, they were able to obtain elite offensive talent that was going to help them change the face of their passing game right away. Having Judy, Hamler, Sutton, Alberto, Fant, all of those players on the same field at the same time. All right? It's a lot of offensive talent. And that might be the closest replica, in my opinion, to the Kansas City Chiefs offense in the league. Then to finish it off, the Broncos got Cushenberry and Muti to help build that offensive line and help the run game. Then after that, they got one of the most underrated edge rushers in the draft in Derek Tuska. So overall, because they had such a great draft, I have to give the Broncos an A-. minus. So it was just an awesome, awesome draft. Good job, Denver. 
now let's talk about the Super Bowl champs, my Kansas City Chiefs. So now people expected the Chiefs to take a running back in the draft, or at least at some point, right? But what surprised me, what surprised me and everyone, was that they took the fifth best rated running back in the draft with their first overall pick in the pick 32. All right. Now I didn't totally agree with the pick, and I still think we should have taken DeAndre Swift with this pick. But I will say. Clyde edwards helaire out of LSU, he fits our, our offense perfectly and is underrated. Now, he stands only about 5 feet 7 inches tall and runs a 4.65 in the 40-yard dash, but in my opinion, he's probably the most shiftiest back in this draft and has the best lateral cuts. And yes, he might not be a running back who's going to run through people, but he will lower his head, he gets aggressive at the goal line, and he'll get those extra yards. Right? And also, his pass-catching ability is one of the best in the draft, hands down, if not the best. Then the second round, the Chiefs then came back and selected Willie Gay Jr., the linebacker, the talented linebacker at Mississippi State with the 63rd overall pick. Now, I'll say this. We did it again. Uh, we selected a guy with crazy upside, but who has some kind of pass character issue. Now, Gay's 6'2", 250 pounds, and runs a 4.46 in the 40. Gay's a violent tackler, and he's everywhere on the field when you watch his tape. Now, but now this. Now, if our coaching staff can train him to be more disciplined in his roles uh, and be more controlled when he plays, then Gay will be a Pro Bowler linebacker for the Chiefs. Right? He was the third overall ranked off the ball linebacker in this draft on some people's boards, behind Isaiah Simmons and Patrick Queen. But now, Chiefs fans, listen to me. I really think that he could be an elite linebacker. Uh, the potential's there, uh, it, but again, we're just gonna have to wait and see to see whether or not he plays disciplined and he listens to the coaching staff. Then I also liked our next two picks in Lucas Niang, the TCU offensive tackle. Uh, Niang struggled in the passing game at times, but he has the size to develop and be the chief starter here, here very soon in the near future. Now, after Niang, we took Legereus Sneed, the safety at Louisiana Tech. Now, Steve, Sneed is a speedster, right? He's 6'1", 190 pounds, and runs a 4'3 in the 40. Now, even though he played safety in college, I think Steed will most likely be our nickel corner going forward, or he might move to outside corner. Not 100% sure, uh, but he's versatile. And again, I think he's the guy who they're going to try to match up with Henry Ruggs twice a year <laughs> to keep up with his speed. Now, overall, the Chiefs had a decent draft. We got a good running back who fits our offense that is going to really help us in the run game. And we also selected a possible elite linebacker in Willie Gay Jr. But now to be fair, again, because I want to just be, uh, you know, pro Chiefs, I have, to, I have to grade the Chiefs at a B-. minus. All right, Now, I'm giving the, Chim, the Chiefs a B- minus because they reached in the draft. All right? They mostly took players who are still developmental prospects, you know, and again, right now, they're really not going to make an effect. Maybe Clyde edwards helaire but that's it, all right? But still, a decent draft, but I still think we could have done better. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, next week, we're going to be going over the AFC and NFC South. Um, if, you like this, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.